Hello and welcome to this motion graphics tutorial using Blackmagic Fusion. This project is inspired by some motion graphics from Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which just goes to show the learning potential of grabbing some piece of motion work which catches your eye, loading it into Fusion for reference, and then having a crack at reproducing it. These tools and techniques definitely aren't groundbreaking, in fact they're mostly essential skills such as wipes, gradients, keyframing and so on. But even simple techniques can be combined to produce decent results. This project should help build up your speed and fluency with these bread and butter techniques, which will help with expressing your own vision on other projects. This project is aimed at beginners, but it does assume that you know the basics of using Fusion, such as connecting nodes and finding your way around the interface. There's a lot of ground to cover and I got a bit carried away with squeezing everything into 30 minutes, so I'm going to move pretty quickly and you'll need to pause the video quite often. For those of you who find the main project a bit simple, here's a fun bonus challenge for you. I've created a modest handful of motion graphic background elements, which you're free to download and use in your own projects. The link is in the description below, but there's a catch. The link is password protected. So here's the password. It's a little difficult to read, but I've hidden a couple of keywords in parts 2 and 3 of this video. If you find those and overlay them, using Fusion of course, so that they invert the image, you'll be able to see the password. If you figure it out, congratulations! Let us know how you get on in the comment section, but please try to avoid spoilers. Now, let's get started on building the Level Up project. The only media you really need for this project is the background image, and the download link is in the description below. I've also provided a layout guide to help with placement and scaling in case you're a stickler for precision, but of course you can just wing it if you enjoy living dangerously. Everything else we'll create in Fusion. There's also a link to the finished project. You don't need to download this since we're going to build it from scratch, but it's there just in case you want to refer to it. So let's start with an empty project. We'll open the project settings, which is under File Preferences, and set the project's format to HD 720 and the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Um, for the record, I've turned on Tile Pictures in the Flow Editor so that you can easily see which nodes I'm working on. I'll also set the frame range to 150 frames, which is 5 seconds. Now I'll load the background image by clicking on the LD button in the toolbar, and I'll do the same for the guide image. Notice that because the first loader was selected when I created the second one, Fusion automatically merged them with the Merge tool. Before I check the merge, I'll check the individual images. The background looks OK, so I'll check the guide image. Whoa, it's a lot of yellow. I could have sworn it looked more like this when I made it. I gave it an alpha channel to help with layering it on top of the background. So let me check the alpha channel in the viewer. That looks the way it should. The idea is that the black areas should be transparent and the white lines opaque. So what's going on? Without wanting to get too bogged down in a Pandora's box of mixed metaphors, images with alpha channels can be either pre-multiplied, where the RGB channels have been multiplied by the alpha, or straight, where they haven't. Most image editors, such as Photoshop, GIMP or Critter, will save straight by default, and that's what we have here. Fusion can handle anything you throw at it, of course. Let's select the loader node with the guide image, and in the Import tab in the Inspector, turn on Post Multiply by Alpha. Now it looks better, and we can turn off the checkered underlay if we want to see it against the black background. Now I'll check the Merge node, and that looks good too. I can toggle the guide layer on or off at any time by setting its loader node to pass through, which will basically disable the node. In practice, you'd hit Ctrl P to toggle pass through. Go ahead and save your project because we are finally ready to get the show on the road. We'll start out as simple as it gets with this rectangular wipe, which I've slowed down to half speed. Notice how the default keyframes are linear, which gives it a very uniform motion. Contrast that with putting a gentle ease out at the top of the wipe and then slamming down to the bottom at full speed. It's a subtle difference, but adds a little character and polish. Then we'll add a couple more wipes, which create these horizontal lines to border our text. I'll select the Merge node and add a soft glow from the Tools bin. I'll load that into the viewer, and oh, it's a lot of glow. I'll just drop the gain so I can see what I'm doing. Now I'll create a rectangular mask using the viewer's toolbar. Now I can select the glow node again and dial in a nice subtle amount of gain. I'll go for 0.4. I want to position it over the right side of the image, so I'll select the mask node and make the viewer full screen by pressing F4. 
I'll use the yellow guidelines to help me position it. Now I'll add another rectangular mask in the same way and by default the two get added together. The way they combine is a little hard to make out, so let me temporarily bump up the glow just so I can see what I'm doing. Before I adjust the glow, I'll click on the S2 button so that later on, when I want to restore my original glow settings, I can just click on the S1 button to get them back. I'll name the new mask Wipe Glow. I can use the paint mode to control how the two masks combine. The most common operations are Merge or Add to add them together, Subtract to punch a hole in the mask, Invert, and Multiply, which gives us the intersection of the two masks, and that's what we want here. I'll make the second mask big enough to enclose the first, and when I drag it up and down you can see the wipe effect I'm aiming for. I'll move it above the entire frame and set a keyframe at frame 0 by right clicking on the word center and choosing animate. Now I'll jump to frame 10 in the time ruler and move the mask down to about the center of the frame. Fusion automatically sets a keyframe. Finally I'll jump to frame 20 and drag the mask right off the bottom of the frame to set the third keyframe. And it's time to check my work. I'll set the playback range to 50 frames and press play. And it looks good. We just need to adjust the motion a bit in the spline editor. I'll click on the selected button so that only selected nodes get shown, and the all button to show everything in the list. I can press Ctrl F to fit my curve to the window, and I'll select the first keyframe and press the F key to give it flat tangents, in other words ease in and ease out. The second keyframe is a bit tricksy, because we want the in tangent to have a steep angle, but the out tangent to be flat. I'll make sure that the in tangent is quite steep, now if I try to adjust the out tangent, notice that the two handles are locked together and I'll mess up my in tangent. So I'll undo that and hold down the control key to adjust them separately. Finally, I'll give the last keyframe a bit more slope. Now I'll play that back, and it looks good to me. And that's it for the first wipe. Now, we need to do another wipe, this time on the left of the screen and wiping from bottom to top and it starts on frame 20, just as the previous one finishes. Now, like everything else in this project, there are countless ways you could approach this, such as combining three masks on the one glow, or using a dissolve wipe, or a gradient, or whatever. So feel free to do whatever makes sense to you. I'm kind of in a hurry, and also a bit lazy, so I'm just going to repeat what I did the first time. So go ahead and set that up now. In case you want to recap, here it is again. I'll duplicate the glow node using copy and paste, and then create the first mask and position it over the left side. Create a second mask and resize it to enclose the first. Set the paint mode to multiply, then keyframe it below the screen on frame 20, center it on frame 30, and off the top of the screen on frame 40. I'll adjust the tangent handles like I did last time, and play back the result, this time with the more subtle glow settings. That was a bit repetitive, but at least you can now animate wipes with your eyes closed, which is just as well because there's one more to go. But thankfully, it's a bit different. I'll duplicate my glow node yet again, give it a mask, and position that using the guidelines, this time over the area where the text will go. That's the full height of this mask, so I'll go to frame 20 and set a keyframe on the height control. A handy shortcut for keyframing is to double click on the vertical bar to the left of the control name. Now I'll jump to frame 10 and drag the height slider all the way down to zero. When I scrub the animation, you can see it grow in height over those 10 frames. Now I'll create a second mask and set its paint mode to subtract so that it cuts a hole in the first mask. I'll drop the height down so you can see how the two masks combine. I'll need to make this wider than the first mask, and now I can start animating it. At frame 20 I'll keyframe the height to zero, and at frame 30 I'll increase the height so that it's almost as tall as the first mask, but you can still see a couple of horizontal bars which will border the text and stay there for the rest of the animation. The only other thing I want to do is add some ease in and ease out to the keyframes. And we're done. That's it for the rectangular wipes. If you've made it this far, then congratulations. That was pretty much the boring part, dragging around rectangles, but it gets more fun from here on out. I hope you'll join me in part two.